everybody, it's Kendra here. Welcome back. I have been away for a while, but I have worked on some things since I last talked to you. And if you saw my last video, maybe you'll understand why I haven't been here. But I took a little break from making stuff, but I do have some stuff from before my break. And now I'm trying to get back into things. So maybe you can take a look at my projects and try to help me decide what I should focus on or what I should start. Maybe I'm missing something in my whip pile here. But I've got quite a few things on the go already. <laughs> you can see I've got some help, so we'll see how it goes today. But uh, yeah, I've got some things to share with you. So like I often have, I have knitting and stitching, but I also have some sewing. And um, I'll put the chapters down below. So if you want to skip ahead, by all means, do that. So first up is stitching. I didn't finish anything, I don't think, except I did finish that piece I was working on for my husband. I can't remember what stage it was at last time. I think I might have been done it, but I hadn't framed it. But I'll show you a picture. That's all done. It's hanging in his office right now, so I don't have it here to show you. But after that, I started back in on my projects, and I have one new start. So I'll show you those things. Let's start with full coverage. My first piece is called The Family Campsite. This is a pattern by Amy Stewart, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. I'll show you the comparison of where I was in the last video. I don't think I did too much on this one, but I think I had pulled it out a couple times at least. And that is where it's at. And she's got a long way to go still. So that is my first project. Everything, I took off the cue snaps and everything. Again, embracing having a little pause. Ooh, needle sticking up. My other full coverage is a piece of the uh, stitching shelf, but I'm doing the quick stitch fireplace, which is a much smaller version. It's about 100,000 stitches. And here's where we're at there. Got the lady's face in and just trying to pull it down. I think we're hitting just about halfway um, on the vertical and then about well this is coming close to a quarter I think once we get down a little bit further into the lady that's like one quarter of it so it is getting closer I'll have to look up the percentage Let's see I don't know if the lighting will work great for this for a very big close-up see some of those stitches in there though I feel like I'm seeing this <laughs> refresh oh my needle stuck in there uh because i again haven't pulled these out in like two months which is feels a little bit unheard of for me so maybe fresh eyes will help here another whip flea market flowers this is by is it also emma i think that quarter shop is where the pattern comes from which way is up? I don't know. I know I started it kind of backwards because in the pattern, I feel like it wasn't super clear which way was up. So this is where we're at. Although maybe it's supposed to be like this, but I know I started in this corner. So that's why it kind of throws me off. I know I've done a fair bit of this one and I was going to try to get this done for spring, but then I didn't. Oh, and I didn't mention it, but both of my full coverage pieces, ooh, there's a lovely back shot, um, are on... 28 count easy stitch easy grid easy count whatever it's called even weave this one here is on 40 count linen i really like this gray color for it and it's going to be a pretty nice size i think once it's done um let's see is this the halfway point maybe or is there one more third I can't exactly remember which way it goes. Haven't looked at this pattern for a little while. And I'm doing like a full color conversion on this one. So it does look quite different than how the pattern suggests. I have one last stitching project. This one was one that I charted up. And to be honest, I should have had this done by now. I feel like there's only a couple hundred stitches left on it. Um, I just haven't done it. And it's one of those things, it's kind of like the annoying white stitches left. I'm doing this in two over one half stitch on the 28 count and um, it could be done and it would look basically the same. There's just like a few holes in there. I've just done nothing, <laughs> just put it away. So maybe that should be my first one to finish up. There's a little more in the water here and yeah, a few things, but that one is very close, but not yet done. All right, moving on to knitting. I did finish one thing. My daughter had asked me to make her a pink hat and I let her pick through all my yarns and she picked a somewhat pink color. And so I did knit it up for her using two colors, the multicolor and then the it's kind of a sparkly gray and knit up just a quick little hat for her. That was kind of my last knitting project. Hello. 
Yeah, there. So that is one knitting. Another knitting to project to show you, I guess, is my Seasons cardigan. It is this one right here. I haven't done too much since I last shared it with you, but I did bind off the body and pick up the sleeve. So maybe I'll show it to you. You want to see how it looks on because it's a pretty good spot for that. Very oversized and stretchy. Oh, hair everywhere. But yeah, that's kind of how we're looking. It's pretty big, but I got lots of sleeve left to do, and it is in the uh, what's it, half broken finisherman's rib or something like that. Creates this nice texture. So I've been really, I like this project. I just have not been motivated to work on it. And I'm knitting that out of Knit Picks Brava in a brown color. I have another ball somewhere. If you're really interested in the color, I could look it up. One more knitting whip is a pair of socks in an attempt to, um, oh, I have another finish. I should go get it. Um, in an attempt to rekindle my love of knitting, I cast on a pair of socks just with some self-striping yarn that I've dyed. And uh, that's what it's looking like. It has just a little bit of a rib on the foot. And yeah, didn't really feel all that motivated to work on that either. So that's where we're at. I did finish another pair of socks. This was my Christmas Eve cast on. And this is how they look. I've worn and washed them several times already. So they're not looking quite as shiny and new as the first wear, but love these colors. This is just another one I dyed. And that's what this pair looks like. Very basic, kind of my go-to plain old sock. Fish lips, kiss, heel, toe up, one at a time, that sort of thing. So I did get those ones done. The other knitting project I wanted to talk to you about was this cardigan that I made for my daughter back in December or maybe end of November uh, to go with her Christmas things. And it's out of this Bernat velvet yarn. And maybe you can see a bit of a problem with it. <laughs> So I used Bernat Velvet like a couple years ago. I used the purple and I crocheted with it. I made a stuffed animal and it seemed fine. I had no issues, but I went to knit this and it created a really nice, silky smooth fabric, nice fuzzy sweater, all well. But every time she puts it on, these loops just start working their way out everywhere. And every time I take either a crochet hook or try to thread them onto a needle just as a loop and sew them back in, and then right away there's like twice as many on both sides it's everywhere these loops everywhere <laughs> and um look at this one crazy so i looked it up online and i've seen other people have this problem but i don't know what the solution is so if you're out there and you've used this yarn and you have a solution please let me know but it's kind of been annoying and now it's basically unwearable because it just doesn't really work as soon as she puts it on these loops are hanging out again I thought about ripping it out and re-knitting, like maybe it was a gauge issue, but if other people are having this problem, maybe it's a yarn issue. So kind of disappointed with that. Um, it did look really cute. She wore it for the Christmas things, but since then I've kind of said, I think we need a break from this to try to decide what I should do with it. So that's been kind of annoying. And that's kind of the end of my knitting. Now, Next up, I guess I'll do spinning because I did spin this skein of yarn back in January. A bunch of blues, but it has a lot of like purplish tones in it too. It's quite a bit of yarn. I think it's 200 grams. Maybe you can see it here. It's all different colors. All those little fluffs and things are just my ties to keep it together. I haven't really pulled it out in a while, but that is one more crappy thing I've done. And you know, since taking a little break, spinning has been the first thing I've wanted to come back to work on. So I'll show you my current spinning too. So I've been using my Plyology electric spinning wheel, which has been perfect because I have tried to spin with babies with a full size wheel and it's so hard to keep them safe from it. And so I've been using my electric wheel. It's been great. So these are my two singles that I'm plying together. It's kind of in progress and a great showing spot, but maybe you can still see not packing the bobbin super evenly, but it's just been a fun, easy sort of project for now. And um, uh, 
that's how we're looking on this one. Last up is sewing. And I have done, I guess, a fair bit of sewing looking at what's in front of me here. First up is this shirt. I've had this fabric for a long time and finally sewed it into a shirt. I'll put the name here. It's by the Avid Seamstress. I think it's the Drop Tee. So it has a, you know, wider drop sleeve. Um, I wonder if I maybe should have made the sleeves a little shorter, but I just, I think I just followed the pattern. And yeah, that was the first thing I made. Then I decided I wanted to make my son some pants. He really needed just some comfy sweatpants. I looked in person and the fabric was ridiculously expensive, like $45 a meter sort of expensive. So I said no to that, but I found some online and I ordered two kinds of micro fleece. He might be wearing his other pair or else they're in the wash, but I just made him some very basic joggers. This in gray, the other one's in black. The other pair I did stick pockets in, but it didn't seem to matter to him. So I just kept these plain, but he is almost seven. So just some very basic cozy pants for him. And when I put in that order, I also ordered some cotton terry, brush terry. So I was thinking I would make myself a sweater, which is the first thing I did. Although I have to warn you, I just wore this and it definitely needs a wash. So ignore the spots. It's just, uh, it needs to get cleaned, but uh, it's just a hooded sweatshirt. I did make it a size up. I wanted it to be oversized, although kind of later somewhat regretted it, wondered if I should have kept it a little more snug fitting. If I think of it, maybe in my next video, I'll wear it so you can see it on. Eh, so dirty. Okay sweater that is another thing i made but i had some extra uh, fabric and i made my baby a little sweatsuit and i thought it was so cute okay so here it is same little pocket these are the same pants that i made for my son my older son and so not that my 10 month old needs pockets but those are the little joggers and then a little sweatshirt just a crew neck sweatshirt to go with it so I thought that was a pretty cute set. Oops. You know, back when my oldest was small, I did way more sewing than I do now, but I really like this little set on him. But speaking of my oldest, I feel like I've sewn her lots of things over the years. And now my younger daughter, who is just about four, is starting to fit into this like next season of dresses that I made. So this one right here, this polka dot dress, I made when my oldest daughter was like four and she had one that matched my younger daughter when she was a brat like a little baby but now she fits it so it's getting kind of new life i made this from a mccall's pattern and for my older daughter too the straps were just a little too long at first so i just tacked them down and i just went back i had opened them up when she got older so she wore it for like three years i think went back in tacked them down for my younger daughter and uh, so she gets to wear this one it has the tie on the back here this nice kind of silky material. It has the lined bodice. I feel like I did a decent job on this this little dress with these tears on it. Anyways, what kind of convinced me to get this going for her, even though normally I might say like, wait a little bit, was I was given an adult size dress in polka dot and I thought I would make it fit my now nine year old. I feel like this is getting really confusing, but basically used to be older daughters, now fits younger daughter. This is now for my older daughter. So it was an adult size dress that I just made smaller. And um, yeah, that is how it's looking, it has this tie. Lots of these things were here originally, but it was like the uh, armholes were way too big. The main part of the dress was dropped down way too far. So now these girls get to be matching again. Figure why not, as long as they want to be, they can be. It is quite a different fabric. This is like a uh, more of a satiny finish. This one is more just a very lightweight um, woven, but it has a lining in it and yeah, they are very similar otherwise with the tiered skirts and I think they look really cute together. All right, so that is everything I've worked on, I think in the last couple of months. I have some ideas of things I wanna make still, some more sewing stuff and um, some knitting projects too, using up some of the yarn that I have. But if you have any ideas of things I should work on or some of my whips to get back to here, I would love to hear it or um, yeah, whatever else you have to say. Thank you for stopping in. Bye. Hi. And it was a grown-up size, so 
sure. Mom, this story up so it can be whole size.